Hello, everyone. I am Erica Daniels, founder of Hope Grows for Autism. Hope Grows for Autism is a nonprofit aimed at improving the lives of families affected by autism through research, education, and advocacy. A lot of our families seek information about CBD and medical cannabis for autism. And today I'm really excited. We have Stacy Kaysen of Planetary. And she is here to educate us and tell us about CBDA. So hi, Stacy. How are you today? I'm good, Erica. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks for joining us. We're really excited. I'd love if you could start by like telling us a little bit about yourself. Of course. And then I know you have an educational presentation you'll go through, mm -hmm. and then we'll do some questions at the end. So I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay, great. I grew up in Louisiana. My, my undergrad was in nursing. So my first job was an ICU nurse at LSU hospital. It's included the pediatric ICU. So full spectrum of that. And then I went back to school to do a master's in anesthesiology. So I was a CRNA or anesthesiology nurse practitioner for another 12 years. And actually my first job out of anesthesia school was at Miami Children's Hospital in I have a great affinity to the, the little ones. Um, and we actually was involved with a study, or this was when functional MRI was brand new. And so I was anesthetizing kids to have functional MRIs and we were a part of a big study. So it was really interesting to be involved um, kind of in the autism research back in 2007. So it was really a, a fun job. Um, and then I moved to Colorado and um, been here since 2008. I went back to school in 13, 14, 15 business school to switch mm -hmm. careers. So I got my MBA from University of Denver and went into real estate development. Um, and wow. then, yeah, then early 2018, and it was kind of through an entry of a real estate property that I was introduced to the hemp world. And it was a great way to kind of combine my science nerd and medical background with with business. So um, I studied the industry, specifically the cannabinoid, the kind of CBD industry from a 30,000 foot view. Um, and processing was a big bottleneck and still kind of is. And then frankly, I wasn't excited about the way things were being processed from the plants. So we set out to create a different way. So we invented a process for extracting the cannabinoids from the hemp plants using water. So it's a cleaner, more natural way because um, you don't have any of the solvents or residuals in the product. It also preserves the cannabinoids the way they're made in the plant. So for those of you that don't know, the cannabis is the technical term for, for the plant, be it on the marijuana or the hemp side. The difference is really a legal term and it relates to the levels of THC, i.e. does this make me high or does this not? So we're on kind of the decaffeinated, the hemp side, um, which is 50 state legal. And the cannabis plant herself makes over 112 that we know of so far, cannabinoid molecules that have been identified. The most prominent one is CBDA. Through processing, through heat, through chemicals, or usually both, that decarboxylates and turns into CBD. But the CBD is not actually made in the plant, it's made converted that way after processing. Um, same okay. thing for THCA to THC. So that's your okay. brief biology lesson on the- No, that's a good way to mm -hmm. understand it. Thank you. Uh, would you like to share your screen? I know you have some, sure. some awesome information to share with us. I wanna correlate autism spectrum disorders with cannabidiolic acid. And I, my goal is to have this um, a little geared towards what's relatable. I think there's plenty of medical and scientific. If I am successful today, I'm bridging the gap between the really medical, technical, and what a parent needs to know, practically speaking. So cannabinoids have been used in, in, in the autism spectrum disorders, or ASD to be short. And the, the main ones that have been studied are cannabidiol, or CBD, and then cannabidiolic acid, which is the precursor to it. Also the THC and the THCA. Newer ones that are being looked at now, but it's still in the early phases are the CBG and the CBGA. CBGA is considered the mother of all cannabinoids. And in the plant, that's the first one. 
And then from that cascade, we get CBDA, THCA. And then post-harvest with extraction, those can be converted into CBD, THC. So all of the cannabinoids that we're using in autism are aimed at treating the symptoms. Um, this is not intended to be a cure, but it's, it's a way of controlling the symptoms and improving quality of life. Just to compare, the commonly prescribed pharmaceuticals on the market, um, studies show 40% of the kids have no response at all. So if we're able to get um, improved quality of life through cannabinoids, I think it's a, it's a great treatment option. So the question on your mind is how can this help my child, I'm sure. So we, in studies, they're looking at improvement of the symptoms along the aberrant behavior checklist. And so these are a few of the common symptoms. Y'all could tell me your own experiences, but I'm guessing it's, it's something like these, anxiety, social skills and cognition, social communication, interactions, repetitive behaviors, um, controlling executive functions, sleep, and then they're also looking at parenting stress and quality of life, adaptive functions, and kind of overall autism symptoms. The um, endocannabinoid system is a system in our bodies is only discovered just within the last probably 30 years. So there's still a lot of developing research on the uh, endocrine and cannabinoid system as a whole. There are now numerous studies that show a positive, strong correlation with overexpression of the CB2 receptors in the brain, which stands for cannabinoid, um, and underexpression of the enzyme it produces anandamide, which is one of an endocannabinoid. So kids with ASC have low levels of anandamide. And in certain places that's used as a diagnostic criteria. So we know there are lower levels of anandamide in the brain in kids with autism. So if our bodies have the endocannabinoid system and all these receptors made for cannabis and kids with ASD have low levels of anandamide, which is a brain lipid that binds to the endocannabinoid receptors, why would we not use a plant derived medicine to treat it? So I, I'd love to get away from the stigmatism of calling this a drug. You're not giving your kids drugs. These are plant-derived medicines. Um, our company and what I do is more specific to the CBD, CBDA side, um, but it is a full spectrum. So there is some THC, but it's not high enough levels that it requires a marijuana card and certain licenses. So it's below that 0.3%. So they're all not psychoactive. Um, CBDA is the acidic precursor, and it's the way it's made in the plant. And I have the structures here that probably don't care so much about, but if you're into the chemistry, it just shows the difference and the decarboxylation, one carboxyl group that gets changed from CBDA to CBD. But it does make a difference in the way it behaves in our body. And in the acidic form, the raw, natural, living cannabinoid, it's more potent and bioavailable in our tissues. So you get a higher amount of absorption and, and um, usage in the body. Bioavailability is a way of saying how much can our bodies actually use. Um, some people say up to 90% of a regular CBD oil is, is excreted without actually being absorbed. So you want to maximize the absorption. Wow. Specific to autism, uh, CBDA has a greater affinity for the 5-HT serotonin receptors especially the 5-HT1A. And that controls everything from like our stomach and the nausea to the serotonin and the sense of calm in our brains. Um, it also reduces seizure activity. There's a, there's a strong correlation with seizures, of course, epilepsy and autism. So it kind of normalizing the brain's activity um, and also increasing the calmness, which I'm sure all the moms would love that part. <laughs> Um, CBDA blocks inflammation also at the cyclooxygenase receptors, which are commonly called the COX receptors. That's the way that ibuprofen, for example, has anti-inflammatory action in our bodies. Um, ibuprofen works on COX-1 and COX-2. Um, CBDA has been shown to be a selective COX-2, which is great because that means it blocks the inflammation, but without the side effects on um, stomach and kidneys. Oh. Too much ibuprofen can lead to um, bleeding stomach ulcers and, and renal failure, renal damage. So it's important. 
There's also links with autism and inflammation in the brain. Probably a lot of our um, common diseases nowadays are linked to inflammation. So when cells kind of get over inflamed and over excited, whether it's in the brain or in your knee, it's, it causes this inflammation cascade. And when that goes unchecked, then we're gonna have problems from that and over time diseases from that. So anything we can do to naturally block the inflammation really helps. And in this case, specifically the neuroinflammation, which is what's leading to the anxiety and the agitation in a lot of these kids. I wanna tell you about Jesse. I'm friends with Jesse's mother. So this was a really personal story. Uh, when we first started the company and first started doing these products, Jesse started using them. So this is her exact quote. I don't, I always like to put it in quotes and, and not change any of the testimonials. So Jesse is autistic and has anxiety disorder. Every morning he takes his regular meds, but he gets out his bottle of water and adds his drink additive. Because of his anxiety, I order three bottles at a time. I think moms can relate. If he doesn't see three bottles, it really upsets him. So I even totally though, get it. Yeah. <laughs> even though he only uses the one dropper as direct, he told me he can feel the difference and that he's calmer. And after he's had his drink additive, at that point, they had started three to four months ago. Um, his other meds, he's been on for years and he's never said that. So Jesse's uh, 18 now and he himself notices a difference. And I can say enough that it was pretty severely autistic, especially around uh, puberty. So mm -hmm. a lot of parents will experience this with puberty as the hormones are changing and their endocrine system as a whole is changing. Sometimes what have been controlled will change a little bit. So um, I love their story and them as people. And it's really like, this is the why, this is what passionately drives me. This is what um, we're all about at Planetary. And this is the reason like, for making these products. And you hear success stories like Jesse. So the big difference for, for my company specifically for Planetary is that we extract with water. So why would you, why does that matter? Most people don't know how their plants are extracted so they don't get the difference. Right. Most, the most common way is with ethanol. So this is, this is the label that has to be with ethanol. It has to be um, stored specifically in the building. It's a highly flammable. Um, the fire department will limit how much you can have at a certain time because it is flammable as biohazard. It has to be reused and um, disposed of properly. So that's what we're putting in our bodies. Um, the plants have incredible benefits. And I would say when we're extracting with something like ethanol, that might attenuate some of the benefits a little bit. There are still, maybe they're small amounts, maybe they're larger amounts, but there is still ethanol in the products. And over time, the more of it we're taking, it does accumulate in the body. So compare that to extracting with water. So there's no hydrocarbons. There's, there's no chemicals that are causing this decarb reaction. So it stays in the stable raw form that it was made in the plant. Our process extracts with water, leaving the product that's as close to the plant as possible, retaining all the benefits while adding nothing of harm. It's the art of combining science and nature to create human well-being. I believe the answer is found in nature and beautifully harnessed with science. So we are all about healing without harm. I love it. And this is our, our purpose statement. Through science and with great passion, by perseverance and empathy, and with bold expectations, we exist to revolutionize wholeness for all living beings and for our world. So for all of you, um, we have a code. If you put in hope grows in the checkout, box at planetary.com, you'll get 15% off your purchase and the organization gets 15% cash back, which they use for research, education, and advocacy. And we really believe in Erica and what Hope Grows is doing. So we wanted to offer that, that program to make it much more affordable for you to get the medicines that you need. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's so generous of you. And it really shows how much you really care about the patients and where you're coming from um, in your business model. So we appreciate that. Mm -hmm.
I have some questions, if that's okay. Please. Yeah, um, please. Because I'm sure parents are going to have some questions. And, and also, we will put up maybe contact information if they have extra yeah. questions. When we start to learn about cannabis, we see there's so many cannabinoids. Yes. Why CBDA as opposed to the other ones? You know, what made you choose CBDA or believe in it so much? We, I started the company before the farm bill passed. So um, it was definitely looking at the hemp side of things. And the most prominent cannabinoid in the hemp plant is CBDA. So we're not actually selecting out any of them. It is a full spectrum. So for example... And what does that mean? Can you t- explain yeah, when you question. say full spectrum? Full spectrum means it's everything that's in the plant. So it's all of the cannabinoids that are in that plant species. It's flavonoids and or terpenes um, and the whole plant material. So there are a lot of companies and a lot of methods that pull out, they call isolates, where they're isolating specific molecules. So only CBD or only THC or only X, Y, or Z, right? Um, and they're excluding terpenes and they're excluding the flavonoids and the plant sugars and the kind of the plant material. There's been numerous studies. It was a big one out of Israel years ago that named the entourage effect. And what they found is that using the whole plant together has greater benefits than the sum of the parts. So pulling out CBD has benefits for certain things and that, that's what epidiolex is. Um, but using all of them together, they act in concert together to have greater benefits than just the one by itself. So we pull out everything from the plant. We mark at um, like the active ingredient on the label will say CBDA because that's the most prominent one. But we also have online the full, um, it's called COA, Certificate of Analysis, where it's, um, and those are all, we have QR codes on every label. So you can find the actual test and it will have CBDA, THCA, CBGA, CBDBA, all of the A's. Okay. So it's more of a matter of what's in the plant. Our process pulls out everything that's in the plant. And the reason CBDA is because it's the most prominent one in the plant. That's really interesting because I was sort of thinking that was like one of the cannabinoids and you were isolating it. It's really like a CBD, but pre-CBD. Correct. And does that mean it's extracted? So it's just with water. So it's the plant and water. There's no heat or anything. Am I right? Correct. Okay. Wow. I don't have any of the powder with me here, but, um, we goes from the hemp plants um, to this full spectrum powder in mm-hmm. with water. So that, that powder is a very concentrated cannabinoids. It also has a lot of flavonoids in it because it's coming from the whole plant. Okay. And then with that raw material, that concentrated cannabinoid um, powder, then we formulate into all the final products for people to use. And pets. Okay. What is your product range? You have tinctures. What else do you offer? Yes, actually, Dr. Bonnie Goldstein is a big advocate for using tinctures, especially in kids, because you can start really low and increase slowly the dose. So, mm-hmm. whereas like a soft gel is 25 milligrams each, and that's a big jump, especially for a little one. With mm-hmm. the the tinctures, you can add a little bit. Fun fact is the word tincture means made with alcohol. And since ours is not made with alcohol. I didn't know that. Yeah, we, I think words matter. I'm kind of a word nerd, but. No, you're no. right. <laughs> so we changed the name to infusion. So when you see on the website, um, the infusion, that's what this is. Another unique thing is that ours is USDA organic certified, not just the flower, but the entire process and the products. So like our infusions are. Wow. 99 point actually no these are 100 (laughs) percent certified organic um, products so it's organic mct oil and we've also done some special um, special mixtures for special needs kids who are allergic to coconut so we've Mm -hmm. made it in olive oil and that's been really Mm -hmm. popular as well Um, so yeah products infusion is the big one to put under the tongue and that's really easy to dose we also have uh, soft gels and they're a brand new one. So that's it and easier to take, especially a lot of the adults that have never used anything before. 
and they're 25 milligrams each and they're the, the small soft gel capsules. Um, and then we have the water soluble drink additive drops, okay. which are nice to drop into. What's really nice, especially in, in this application, the water soluble format crosses the blood brain barrier more readily. So you'll wow. get better brain effects, right? Calming, anxiety. I find my ADDs so much more focused when I've used the drink additive. So I put it in my coffee every morning. Um, oh, and a lot that's of easy have, too. Yeah, easy because you put it in the coffee, you put it in the, you know, protein shakes or smoothies or yeah. whatever. You can put it in water. If you put it in a, a little bit of water, there's a little taste that you, know, you may or may not right. like. So it depends on how you want to use that. Um, and then now we have a drink additive powder, and this is also the water soluble, but it's in a scoop powder um, instead of the drops. So this one is orange flavored. We have an orange flavored and an unflavored, but it's just a little powder it comes with a scoop. You can put that in same thing, smoothies, water, coffee, whatever kind of process you want in the morning. So you can and put it in a warm thing. drink? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, definitely can put it in one drink. I do the I do mine in coffee every morning, so that works. Um, and then we have some topicals. Um, we have the body butter is a new one. We have salves, muscle rubs, more topical. But you know, specific to autism, I think the ingestibles do better because you want it to have a full body absorption, and especially into the brain. But for for moms, if your you know back is sore, <laughs> the muscle yeah, rub. I was going to ask you that. So a lot of times, you know, we look for. Um, different things for our children, but then find that, oh, this could work for me too. Yeah, so who are sure. some of your, you know, other patients or, you know, yeah. us moms, you for know? Sure. Yeah. I love the muscle rub. Mine's in my bathroom because I was using it last night, <laughs> but it's, um, it's in a plastic twist up, almost like a deodorant type um, bottle that you mm -hmm. can roll on. So then you don't get your hands greasy, putting it on. It works. I feel like within five to 10 minutes, um, mm -hmm. And actually, I even use it now and instead of ibuprofen for like menstrual cramps, you know, rub it on your really? lower abdomen and it works there. Yeah. So there's, there's quite a few good uses of that. Um, we have a, a topical salve that's, it's great for the skin and also um, like scar reduction and joint pain, muscle pain, kind of anti-inflammation. Um, we've had mm -hmm. people report that it's good for like their rosacea or eczema just kind of, because again, those really? are inflammatory on the skin. So anything to yeah. calm the inflammation at a cellular level, it's effective. And then the body butter is a newer one that we released. It's all organic um, and has lavender essential oil. So there's a nice kind of calming effect. I like it like at night after a bath, you know, cover yourself in the body butter. It's quite luxurious for the skin. Right. And relaxing, I'm sure. Yeah, sure. So how do you, what do you advise on, um, you know, dosing, you know, in some of the autism patients that you work with? Ooh, that is I mean, I know there's no one size, but, you know, if somebody buys a bottle of CBDA from you, how, you know, are they giving a whole drop or are they starting really little? Depending on the size, I would, I would start smaller. And I think what some of the docs will do is they'll start with like a drop and then next time do two drops and then really start slow and, and kind of measure that up. Each drop is five milligrams, which is a low okay. starting dose. And that's kind of written on there, but CBDA being stronger than CBD, you'll want to start a little lower and just really watch. The sublingual drops on the infusion are nice because if you can get them to hold under their tongue, um, mm -hmm. it, it takes effects much quicker. I will remind you the A stands for acid, so it does have a bite. Um, if they can hold it under their tongue longer, then it's, it's better. But if you take this drop and just like down the hatch, you'll feel a little like a, like a bite, like a spicy mm -hmm. food kind of acidic bite so there's definitely a whole plant material so um, the newest flavor we have is tropical flavor which is kind of a coconut pineapple infused which okay. does help the taste um, and then we also have a mint flavor just to kind of help with the taste but yeah dosing is a it's a big question we get asked a lot and yeah. it's it's hard because we're so individual but the best rule of thumb is to start 
um, with a lower amount and then increase and, and really watch for the symptoms and there'll be kind of a sweet spot. And like for adults, there'll be a point where, okay, one soft gel, which is 25 milligrams, which would be half of a dropper full. Okay. Or five drops. And that's all on the labels. Um, that may be enough to kind of feel it. But then if you take twice that much, then you're like, oh, wow, I'm really calm. So there's going to be kind of a, a mark in the dosing where you start to feel it and you'll feel a little more. Another interesting mm -hmm. thing about CBDA that's different from CBD is with CBD, you get what we call biphasic dosing. So a little bit is not enough. A little bit more is okay. Oh, there's my sweet spot. But then too much has like an adverse effect for CBD. We don't see that with CBDA. And in the research and in the white paper we wrote, this doesn't have that biphasic dose. For example, THC and CBD can be used for anti-nausea. But if you take too much, people actually feel nauseous. So that's right. an example of that called biphasic. So we don't see that with CBDA, um, but I still recommend starting with the least possible amount and then increasing until you kind of find that sweet spot where it's resolving symptoms. Yeah, I think that's a really good rule of thumb. Um, some of our families report um, that they see with using CBD um, that they need to use a, a higher dose that if they use too little of a dose, they tend to see some adverse effects or agitation. Can you just clarify, I mean, you did, you started to a little bit there, but this is this different, right? It shouldn't have that same um, dosing effect or it, you know, it right. does follow that. I haven't had anyone report anxiety with it. Um, it's more calming, but what we have had are some people have increased energy. And I think it's because when the okay. anxiety or yeah. the side of like, stress i think we don't even adults kids all we don't even realize how much stress we feel just kind of at an underlying baseline until you take a drop or full and you're like oh wow i oh there's a weight off my shoulders i actually and that then you know allows a little more energy like oh gosh without the weight of the world on my shoulders i right. feel more energized i i feel like i can accomplish my day better so i don't think that it there's really no evidence or research to say that it stimulates or puts you to sleep. And yet a lot of people find those when they've kind of reduced the, the stress and anxiety. Got it. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, and then how many times a day do you usually recommend dosing? I would say at least twice. Um, and you can do three. You, you will want to see how it uh, metabolizes, but it's it's somewhere from like four to six hours is usually how long it lasts, maybe okay. eight. Um, the topicals last longer, but you don't have so much of a systemic absorption. Something like the infusion, the oil drops are gonna act within about 20 minutes and then typically four, six, eight hours. What I noticed working with autistic kids, especially in anesthesia, is sometimes they can have really high metabolisms. And yeah. they kind of chew through the drugs really fast. They, their bodies are metabolizing the medications and the anesthetics really fast. So they may require more or what they may find is like, try it every six hours, try it every four hours and see how you do. Right. I, I think that's important too, because I think families tend to, you know, they don't want to give too much or give unnecessary things of anything. So they try to use some of these products like as needed, whereas right. I always found that it works best if you use it sort of regularly on a regular schedule, like you would any other medication. And that prevents, you know, you from getting to that chasing yeah. the anxiety right. or chasing whatever, you know, that's, is happening phase. That's a really good point because it is hard to play catch up. And yeah. 20 minutes is a really long time when your kid is screaming and I mean, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. if you it's take like it, looking at your clock, okay. Yeah. If you, when you it, want the fast acting, really? where's the fast acting? Is right. That next? <laughs> yeah. If you take it consistently, what it's doing is keeping your, your body's endocannabinoid system satiated. You're, you're restoring kind of balance and that homeostasis in the body. 
So the, I think the most ideal way to take it is consistently. And if it's twice a day or three times a day, but keep it consistent. And then you can take or give more as needed for kind of breakthrough symptoms. And then just, just right. track it. Like if I'm having to give kind of a breakthrough dose every other day, maybe I need to increase the baseline dose. Right. Um, but having, like you said, that consistent, take it, you know, with breakfast and dinner or take it with, mm -hmm. if you have other medications or vitamins or things, but getting on a consistent, I think that helps the kids too. They, they know they're getting this consistently and they'll start to realize I actually feel better. I'm, I'm getting this weird coconut bitey stuff in my mouth. So, okay, I like right. it. I can get down with this idea. And then, and then you can add more as needed, but. Right. Um, what about a lot of families um, struggle with sleep issues? Do you have anything you can share about that? Um, I think a kind of along the same lines, sleep is, is a factor of anxiety unexpressed in the brains or you know, kind of the neurochemicals inflammation of the brains for, for most. And so having that overall anti-inflammation and, and anti-anxiety kind of calming effect, most people report sleeping well with it. It may be a timing issue. Um, oddly enough, we've had a couple of people say the soft gels um, keep them awake, but don't have that with the oil. So it's, it, and the only thing I, the only difference between those is the soft gel being encapsulated, you're swallowing it, it's going through your stomach, it's going through liver first pass effect. So mm -hmm. it, it may be, you know, being metabolized in a little bit different way, but most people with the, with the infusion or with the oils do report sleeping better. Um, and a lot of people do it at night as part of kind of a nightly routine to get them through the night and and help with the quality of sleep. Mm -hmm. Patients with autism tend to have dysregulation in their endocannabinoid system. Yes. It seems to me that something like this would not just help with the symptoms, but help repair over time. Have you seen that, you know, more of a permanent kind of more long-term? I think long-term resolution of, or improvement in symptoms is mm -hmm. is for sure what we see but if if you go 10 years and and your symptoms are are not there are you still autistic or not i don't i don't know if we have enough good research to like intellectually comment right. on that right um, some things some of the symptoms are kind of outgrown or they've learned to manage it maybe i mean since they've proved the anandamide levels are low it does make sense i see where you're going that this could kind of cure it or get the brain back on track to, to balancing out all the neurotransmitters. I don't, I just don't know if that's known yet. Right. Or even, I mean, even, you know, a lot of the me underlying medical issues, you know, are similar like GI issues, seizures, yes. um, pain, you know, things like that. I, I would imagine that, you know, those things are getting better over time. And then, you know, when you feel better, you're performing better, you know, in your life and academically and all those kinds of things. I mean, we, you know, there's, real, there's, there's no cure, obviously. Um, yes. But there's certainly tools like this that can significantly help symptoms. But what I like about it is it's not like a a pharmaceutical that's just kind of cover it's not doing any repair right it's just covering up maybe covering up something underlying that's awry but what i like about the cbda conversation is that you know maybe and maybe this is something we can track or learn about in the future no, um good. maybe we're actually helping repair or keeping in harm harmony our system uh, that definitely makes sense. And all of those other symptoms you named are all inflammatory in nature. So by modulating or reducing or blocking the inflammation, look, a little inflammation is good, right? If you cut your hand, your body sends cytokines and the inflammatory response to heal that. And so a little is, is vital, right? right. What the problem is when it's too much and it gets out of control and then you know, our bodies get hyper inflamed and that's the gut stuff. So by controlling the inflammation, 
and you control the others. The body is on a constant feedback loop, right? So Chinese medicine says the gut controls the brain. And mm-hmm. I don't disagree with that, actually. So getting the gut- I don't either, into, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, like when I went gluten-free, I was like, man, my brain feels better. Um, so getting those things in balance and that, that kind of feedback loop, it does make sense that that would get the body kind of back into a better homeostasis. And right. um, we don't use the word cure yet, but- Maybe it does right. track the symptoms so much that you don't feel like you have it or it's not limiting your daily life anymore. So right. I think the, that's the line where you can, yeah. it's not interfering with your, right. your life in any way. Um, is there, so I, I'm, I'm seeing it that like, instead of using CBD, like this would be in place of CBD, you wouldn't want to use CBD and this or yeah. like a cbg and like could you, do you mix it with things do you layer things or it you seems can. like if you did it would be the base um i don't know yeah you can i would kind of talk to your doctor about that um in the right. beginning dr goldstein was sending us patients i think that uh we're not responding well to cbd so let's try CBD, okay right right so okay that's good to know no that was kind of the the beginning of it and then i think we started not to speak for her at all, but I think then right. we start seeing where patients are responding really well to that. And, and maybe it is because it's a full spectrum and the acidics really have a ton of promise. So they act on different and additional receptors. So there's okay. no problem with mixing CBDA and CBD. Um, you just may be taking too much that isn't needed at some point. So right. again, it would kind of be the balance, but the the combination of those together has a a powerful anti-inflammation action. So yeah, I don't think there's a problem with taking any of it. It just may not be needed. Right. And because it's um, hemp-based and doesn't have THC, you can order it. You can order online um, from anywhere. There's no kind of barriers in that way, right? All 50 states. Um, Canada, ironically, will not let us ship CBDA in uh, okay. because they have their own program and their own labor right. and all that. There are ways right. to get it in through another importer, but we're not there yet. Um, but we ship regularly and successfully to like the UK and a couple of different countries in in um, Europe. We ship to Australia. Um, there's a couple in South America that allow it, Mexico. So, but yeah, all 50 states and quite a few other countries. So it depends on the destination country. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, well, I want to thank you um, thank for you. committing yourself and doing this because you're not just making, you're not just selling cannabis here. There are a lot of people that are just selling cannabis. There's a lot of people that are just selling CBD. And this is not that. This is a, like, I want to say an artisan specialty product that has been very thought through to um, be the purest form, you know, possible. Yeah. Um, and it, it sounds like, you know, from your experience and, and where you're coming from, I mean, this is really close to your heart and, yes. um, you know, thank you for that because it is hard when you're in this big space of people kind of selling CBD and cannabis, yeah. our community <laughs> tends to get lost, you know, nobody really like they care about us, but you know, it's, yeah. you know so I appreciate that because I know it probably isn't easy no. um <laughs> yeah it's, it's been a lot of statement probably a lot of R&D has gone into this a lot of blood sweat and tears yeah. uh, we just passed yeah. our three-year anniversary and probably 80 hours most week I'm working so yeah it's 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 also a passion project and all of us on the team get really excited about it I mean I think actually very specifically, the kids with autism have kind of become our favorite, don't tell the others, but it's, it's become this really near and dear because when you can make a difference in a child's life, you've also made a difference in the whole family's life. And now you've like, you've really impacted quality of life. And that's, that's what we're here yeah. for, to introduce healing without the harm. Yeah, I mean, I, we did some survey on that and um, it didn't just, we saw improvement, not just in the individuals, but also um, in the quality of life for the entire family. So that's, and that's, you know, part of 
that's what hope grows is about good really um, good for the feedback so i want to hear yeah. it all even if you say like it tastes terrible but it works well like whatever i want to hear all of it right that. right that helps us learn and grow and also any of the positive stories like that gives that gives meaning to our mission right it definitely it definitely does um, well, I'd like to give you this opportunity to share anything else you'd like to share with our community. We're still small and nimble and, and passionate. So if there are special needs, like don't hesitate to ask. I, I can't promise we can accommodate everything, but we, some things are really not that hard. Like the child with um, the coconut allergy, we started making an olive oil blend. Now we have several kids we do that for and Right. You know, that wasn't a big deal, but it was a really big deal to the parents. So no, of course, I, I appreciate them, you know, reaching out like we're, we're humans, right? So we, we want to hear, we want to interact. We want to know that we're helping. And if not, tell us how, um, mm -hmm. and you know, that, that kind of interaction and request is, is valuable to all of us. Awesome. Yeah. So I'm assuming then that your products are gluten-free and dairy-free and yeah. all that good stuff that we like to hear. Yes. That's okay. how I use it. So I'm all about that. The soft gels are not vegan because there's not a good vegan encapsulation yet. We've tried. Um, but everything else is, and everything is, is gluten-free, dairy-free, non-GMO. All of our hemp is grown in, in Colorado. We do all of the, um, the water extraction all the way down to the final product and the safety seal in our facility in Northern Colorado. So we know where the plants came from, the day they were harvested. We know that everything is tested before it comes in, after it's extracted, and then the final products. So there's full testing and chain of custody, third-party testing all That's along amazing. the way. Yeah, so there's quality assurance for all of you. And most of our products are certified organic. The couple that aren't, it's because like there's one ingredient that we can't source organic. Right. So, Which is yeah. rare to find. CBD, anything that's certified organic, that's hard to get. I know that. So yes. congratulations. <laughs> and most of those sure that, that are organic, easy. it's just the hemp plants that are organic because it's hard to do the extraction and all, but because we're extracting with water, our entire process is certified organic. So that was, yeah, we're really proud of that. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's awesome. So anybody who's interested can go to your website and order products, learn more about it. You can get a discount and support Hope Grows in the process. Yes. Thank you very much. And Stacy, again, thank you for your efforts. Thank you for your, your products. And thank you for talking with us and um, educating us about CBDA today. Of course, my pleasure.